human life is a gift from God. It is sacred. It has an inviolable dignity. And justice requires that we acknowledge and respect the dignity of each human life as created by God. As a man who is pro-life, it's also not just life regarding the unborn. You gotta realize that includes those who are handicapped, those who are infirmed, the elderly. If you don't have God in your life, you don't have pick up your cross and follow me, if you're just as valuable as just the chair you're sitting on, then euthanasia makes a lot of sense, right? But suffering gives us the option of serving and of loving. Whether it's a handicapped sibling, whether it's going to the nursing home, at any point, we are all children of God with his breath in us. Dignity is there. This culture of death requires and demands of us a spiritual response. It requires and needs men who will stand up for life. Men who will stand up for the weak, the poor, the vulnerable, the elderly, the handicapped, and that begins within their own families. The scripture talks a lot about protecting the widows, the orphans protecting those that are the most vulnerable. It is the most basic responsibility for us as men. The abortion is one of the greatest tragedies in human history, where the most innocent, the most vulnerable is ripped out of one of the most sacred spaces, the womb, to protect those that need protecting. If we're not willing to stand for that, we're not gonna be willing to stand for much. It's what we're called to do as men. It's because the child in the womb has no voice that this becomes the primordial issue. A nation that kills its own children is a nation without hope. A couple of years ago, another sister and I were praying outside of an abortion clinic. A man drove up in his SUV and he rolled down the window and he said, hey sisters, I just want to thank you for being here. Because 27 years ago, I drove my girlfriend to a place just like this, but there were people like you outside praying. So we just kept on driving. And I just got off the phone from wishing my daughter a happy birthday. <laughs> and now I have this most beautiful daughter. Thank you for being here. That man, his name was Andre. He was looking for someone. He wanted to be a protector. He wanted to provide. And when he was given that in, that window, when he saw others protecting life, he then protected life. He protected the life of his daughter. One day my wife says, I think we need to adopt. And so thought about it, prayed about it. I said, yeah, okay, we'll open ourselves up to it. Two birth mothers chose us. It's like same time, same day, and it was like, oh. All right, God, here we go again. One of the birth mothers, she didn't want to uh, give her child up for a loving adoption, but she just said, I, you know, I can't provide for this child. She said, I just don't want people to think that I don't love this child. But it was obvious that she did. I said, actually, I said, it's quite the contrary. I mean, what you're doing is like the greatest act of love that I've ever witnessed. Yeah, I couldn't imagine the, the, the strength and the selflessness that that takes. Love involves sacrifice. Love, love hurts. From the second I held my two youngest sons, they're my sons. Can't imagine my life without those two kids. Open yourself up to God's will and, I mean, thank God we did. I was raised from a Hispanic family. My parents are from Colombia. My dream was to be a Major League Baseball player. I didn't have a Major League bat, but I had a Major League mouth. And welcome back to the show. I'm I got to Rose. interview many different types of professional athletes from Michael Jordan to Walter Payton. I would go to the car wash, and I remember guys would recognize me from TV, and I'd go to the grocery store, and the little old ladies in the bakery would want to say hello. Sports taught me a lot about perseverance and about teamwork and about dedication. I always considered myself Catholic, but it wasn't the most important part of my life. I was worshiping at the altar of sports, and that's when I went off the path. In my, in my early 20s, um, I was looking for love in all the wrong places, doing the nightclub scene, and I wasn't really following God's plan for, 
for love and, and human sexuality. And sure enough, I met a young lady, and lo and behold, one day she tells me that she's pregnant. Um, I couldn't believe it, but somehow I knew deep down in my heart that this is a human being, this is a baby. But I really wasn't uh, living a life worthy of the gospel. I gave in and I wrote the check to pay for the abortion. And so I realized that I will never see that child until I get to the other side of the veil. You just don't forget something like that. And I would go to the ballpark sometimes with film crews to do interviews, and I'd see dads with their little babies. And I would think to myself, wow, how I wish I was a dad. I probably wrote the check out of a sense of guilt and responsibility. I think I was scared more than anything. We weren't living God's plan. It left a hole in my heart. It really did. I went through bouts of depression, and it was a decision that I regret for the rest of my life. One day, I walk into a church in Chicago, and I'm talking to the pastor, and he's like, John, listen, I gotta go do the next mass. Here, talk to Cindy. About a year and a half later, he was celebrating our wedding mass. We had been married a little later in life, but having children was something that I had always longed for. We started looking into the possibility of an adoption. Lo and behold, one day, a young mother who is looking for a family, a little gift from heaven had landed on our laps. We named him Joseph Dominic. And so in Spanish, he's Jose Domingo. His birth mother could have easily aborted him. He could have easily been one of the statistics, but by the grace of God, chose life, she chose adoption, and she chose us. And for that, I am eternally grateful to our Lord. He's now 12 years old, he's taller than my wife. Uh, he's in sixth grade, bats left, throws right. We've spent so much time together. For me, the issue of life went from the back burner to the most important human and civil rights issue of our time. That's where I got the inspiration to make The 40 Film, a documentary film that takes a look at where our nation was 40 years after Roe v. Wade. I think that in this day and age, more than ever, we live in a media world. I know that the Lord used me as His instrument to promote the culture of life, to promote the pro-life message through this film. So it's all part of this spiritual battle. As men, we need to step up to the plate and we need to do our part. If people only knew what abortion really is about, what Planned Parenthood really stands for, and I believe that the truth is being exposed, and I believe that the tide is turning towards the culture of life. Science is catching up with scripture and people are actually seeing through their own eyes. All you gotta do is look at an ultrasound. Abortion will not only become no longer legal, but it'll become unthinkable. If I had the opportunity to talk to a young guy who may have made a mistake and he's thinking of abortion, I'd put my arm around him and say, listen, this is a life-changing decision. It's a human being made in the image and likeness of God. Never forget that there's always the option of adoption. My life is so much more joyful because of adoption. Every day I give thanks to the good Lord for the joy and the beauty of the sanctity of life that I have today with my little child. I think when it comes to uh, the gift of human life, particularly the unborn, men have been silenced in a lot of ways because this is now a women's issue. And I think for the most part, we've kind of said, okay, I guess that's the case. I guess I'll be silenced instead of saying, no, a father wouldn't be silent when his own children or even someone else's children whose lives are in danger. If he were to say, listen, I'll be with you. We can do this. I'll help you. I will be with this child. 
regardless of what happens to us, I can tell you that probably about nine out of 10 women would give birth to that child. If they perceive that kind of support from the man that has been responsible with them for the co-creation of this child. I really would like to see more men involved in the pro-life movement. I would like to see more men as sidewalk counselors. My husband is a sidewalk counselor in Detroit on infamous Eight Mile. And he's seeing women either being dropped off by their boyfriends or their fathers. The guys leave, they come back, and the women are all there on their own with really no, no support. And when, when the women do come over and talk, it's always if they had the support, they will gratefully accept it. I've had the opportunity to go to the March for Life in DC a number of times. I think it's important for us because it, for men to be present at those because it, again, it's, it's showing everyone else that we as men are stepping out and we're willing to stand in front to fight for those that need to be fought for. What better place for us to stand than a place like the March for Life? The desire of a woman's heart is to choose life. It's simply imprinted the way God created us. And men have a huge role in this. Um, we can tell a woman all day long that we think she'd be a great mother. And then we'll bring in one of our men volunteers and he'll tell her the same thing and it changes everything. We cannot sit back and watch these atrocities happen, we have to stand in the gap. And sometimes that simply means saying something, speaking up, but most of the time it has to do with our actions and defending those who cannot defend themselves. And certainly the unborn child, the most defenseless, needs us.